skull that day. I didn't think that anybody was watching me and listening to me as I said that. And I said that because I was just a little bit, you know, just still feeling a little bit scared. You know, I didn't, like, plot out in my head, ooh, let's see what kind of dig I can get into this for. No. And why I sound a little bit defensive about that is because the very next thing that I remember is sitting down right next to my fifth grade teacher who had blonde hair, black glasses, um, and let's hope that she was not born under, you know, the sunshine yellows, because, um, talk about badly representing it, and I, and I think it has more order some that. food here in a few minutes. Do you want to let us know what you want, Everett? Um, oh, we're going to go into Des Moines and pick it up. I don't think we're going to go to Des Moines, but we can get in the car together and pick it up. Oh, maybe we could do Mexican. Do Mexican? Okay. I don't know. Well, why don't you come on out here? Take a. Can you pause it? And we can talk about it. So where was I? So she was wearing a gray sweatshirt. It probably said something on it. It was like a you know football. Well, I don't know. Jeans and you know, you know, blue jeans. That's what she was wearing. And, you know, sweater. And I don't remember if I was chilly that day, and it, you know it got warmer um, as the day progressed. Um. And I just sat down. I just, you know, probably pitched in, did something, came there, sat down next to her. I was aware that uh, I was next to her. Maybe she coaxed me to sit next to her. I was just looking off, just thinking to myself quietly. And then, um, and then she... She probably said, hey, I want to talk to you about something, or just started talking. But anyway, I looked her in the eyes. She looked me in the eyes, and she told me a lesson in which, to tell you the truth, the lesson itself would be something that I would sometimes kind of go back to and agree with. But if it's coming from her, certainly not. And I would definitely take 
just com just completely disregard what she was saying to me because it would be false in that situation. And I want to get into it now. So she told me that it's wrong to question experts question people who know what they were doing. And if I did, I had no intentions of doing that because there wasn't a single bone of that in my soul of questioning. And questioning in my definition is asking something very, very loosely and keep jabbing it and bothering and touching. That's what questioning is. Um, she said something like that. I don't remember what she said, but she said something like that. And Garrett was sitting next to me, who was a student that I knew being together with him for a lot of my days in fifth grade, because we were both special education. Um, we were both Miss Black with Miss Traver. She said that, and I said I understand the lesson, even though I didn't, I just did not want to say anything against her because that I would be feel like I would be splitting chaos and I could could not bring myself to do that. You know, it's like she would probably go off and she was uh, she, yeah, now now she was a force to be reckoned with. She was really um tough rod. Um I'm uh, I'm trying to think of the word that uh, Jeanette Wells described her um, her dad's mother, her grandmother as. But no, she was a force to be reckoned with. My teacher was a force to be reckoned with. Um, and so then she said that we would have to write two things when we got back, when we would get back. One of which was writing an apology to the people at the, um, you know, the Internet Nature Center for probably how I acted, how everybody acted, well, not everybody, but how I acted, and, you know, that I'm sorry for what I said or, you know, whatever I did, which I didn't say or do anything wrong or anything mean, but nonetheless. The next thing, the second thing, was writing out a list of steps for building a TV. Why? Well, I could assume that she just wouldn't think that we gained or, you know, learned too much out of things and, you know, you know people weren't, you know, messing around and, and and the lady was doing most of all the work and people weren't taking it seriously. I don't know. And then I was feeling very, very hurt. And in sheer disbelief, she was serious that I had to do those things. And I was just feeling at that point just like I had been, you know, left in the face that just like a knife had gone like done that in my chest it was not a good feeling I was feeling really inhibited and really insecure and just just I hoped and I prayed 
that we would not have to write those things, and I just wanted to get on the bus, get back to school, get the day over with so that I could go home with my family and have a nice evening. That kind of sounded like a dream come true at that point. We got on the bus. I sat on the bus. Sitting right across from Zane, who was sitting on the bus with me. He started acting up again along with other students and there was so much talking I could not control him at all. I just couldn't. I just was irritated but I was just so emotionally exhausted that, you know, I just after a point I just kind of, you know, whatever, I'll just ignore it. I didn't have to put up with it. I got back and no, we got back to the, um, to the school. We all got out. And I remember she was standing right next to the door where we would go in, and I remember asking her how long until the end of the day. And when I started asking her that, and she probably didn't hear me, and, um, um, and she just said, go, go inside now, um, or something like that. So, I remember going inside because, um, you, you know, to kind of move in the line, and I could sense, at that moment, at that moment, that she was mad and the storm was brewing just like what would be seen up on the clouds. The weather dictated what went on down below that day. I wonder if Pluto was like direct in the sky, I don't know, but um I went down the hall to the classroom. I put my bag and my lunchbox away in my locker. Um, and then I um, and then I went back, sat down at my desk, and then when everybody got in there, she called us all up to the floor, and I sat down on the rug. She was sitting in her, you know, chair, um, you know, alongside the walkers, and she, we all looked up, and she was sitting there, giving us a lecture on just how mad and how you know, disappointed that she was, because she was just, just appalled, embarrassed, um, all of those things, and she did not enjoy the day, nor did I, and that really just was the thing that just ruined the experience. So, she said that, you know, she just went on about the people over at the, you know, Net Nature Center and, and that, you know, that she expects more from, you know, fifth grade class and, you know, you know, all of you did, most of you said something or did something wrong and, uh, you know, I didn't get paid to 
they visit you and, you know, we don't have to do all these fun things. I can just whip out, you know, worksheets out of my file cabinets and we can do those instead of going on field trips and doing this and that. Two out of the 25 students, I, um, I would say, in the class, you know, passed her exam of behavior and did not have to, you know, just, I guess, suffer the consequences of, you know, what, you know, her, you know, what she was going to say next was that what I want you all to do is write an apology to the people at the Internet Nature Center and then also a list of steps like she told me and Jared. So I got to know prior to that. And I, as I walked in, I hoped and prayed that we would not have to do that. And we did. Those two students did not have to do that. The next thing she said was, go, go, do it. And I went to my desk feeling just very, very uncomfortable. I felt like I would just explode in a second. I felt just, just all those feelings just kind of coming up. And I felt like crying because I just want to get the day over with. And I just, I could not relax. I just could not sit and relax in that environment with her around. I did what was easiest first. I, I, I wrote the steps. I then handed it to her um, at her desk, and then she said, aren't you going to write the apology letter? And I thought I could get away with not doing the apology letter, but of course, you know, she, you know, she suggested it, and I kind of had a little dread that I would have to do that. The reason why that would be the hardest thing to do was I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say. It would all be lies. I would be lying. With all those emotions and all those strong, intense feelings that I was feeling, there would be no, like, just, just I wouldn't mean anything by it. It wouldn't be genuine, you know, anything like that. Because if I wrote down, like, the honest truth, she would see it and, you know, she would make a comment and a criticism, maybe have me go over the old. I didn't know what she would say or what she would do, and I did not want to risk it. Um, I think now, um, with the 2021 version of myself, I think I would attempt to say something. Now that I'm older, if, you know, if I was in that situation, but me being so young and, you know, you know, just very sensitive at the time, just, just, I could not pluck up the courage to, you know, be assertive about those things like I have the goal of 2021 to do now. So I wrote, sorry if I'd been, you know, disrespectful, um, and, um, um, I was not, and, you know, I probably said, you know, you know, I didn't, you know, I honestly didn't, you know, act up, you know, I was truthful, but I didn't want to, like, really, you know, just make an enemy out of her or say anything mean or whatever, so I was, 
having that in mind and being cautious and then I went after her and thank goodness I was let off the hook. I sat down uh, in my seat then and then we got ready to go and she was standing right next to me and, and, and throughout the whole year period I just felt so ner so nervous, you know, for my friend, you know, Zane, that he would be caught you know, doing this or acting like that and things like that. And, um, and I was not one of those people that did that. So, I don't know if I cried. I would imagine that I probably did, or maybe... I, my, I was content with my emotions, but I, I know inside I was really, really feeling it. Um, and at that time, you know, that was a little bit after it happened. So I was feeling a little bit better, you know, now that I would be leaving, um, you know, to go home that night was the night when we ordered crab pizza. Um, you know, like imitation crab pizza and I watched Harry Potter. Um, the source was still in the very, very first movie, the, the very, very first time I saw Harry Potter that evening. And then I had an, you know, a nice weekend and then went back for another week on Monday morning and things like that and the next big you know time frame with one of those episodes would probably have to be around Christmas time that's all for today and that's all for now. And this is not true, I'm not making any of this up. And it does give me a lot of, you know, kind of, it's kind of hard and uh, it makes me sad to bring this up, but um, it's true.